Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic. This is Dr. David Drozik asking, are you ready for health? In this session, we're going to talk about how to balance stress. This is one of eight sessions that you'll find on our website, thelifestylemedicineclinic.us. If you're finding us on YouTube, we would encourage you to go to the website where you'll find additional resources listed in the sidebar, as well as further down the page, our featured recipe for this lesson is vegetable curry. You can find it listed for download in the left sidebar. It's modified from Jeff Novick's Fast Food Basics. You start out with a cooked whole grain, such as brown rice. It can be another cooked whole grain if you prefer. White rice would also work. However, we encourage you to consider the whole grain. If all you have is the white rice, use that up and then move into brown rice next time you purchase it. You can also, if you're trying to keep the prep time low, is get some of the pre-cooked, like boil in a bag brown rice or the even the instant brown rice ready to go, which keeps us nice and quick and easy for you after work for your family. Or you can use the regular rice and do that in a rice cooker. Set it up even before you go to work so when you get home the rice is ready. Then you want to get some potatoes ready. Now you can use canned potatoes or you can get your whole potatoes and microwave those after piercing them so that they're already soft, ready to put in and mix with the, the curry mix. And then you can add in your tomato product. It can be whole tomatoes if you have fresh tomatoes, or it can be tomatoes from the can. Ideally, you want to find the low salt or no salt versions. This recipe also calls for chickpeas or garbanzo beans. These again can come from the can. Ideally, you want no salt added, or you can make those beans up from scratch ahead of time. It won't fit your 10-minute window if you're looking for a quick recipe, but you can prepare those ahead of time as you can find in the bean and legume prep sheet that you can find on our fill up with fiber sidebar from our first lesson. And of course for curry you need ginger. You can use the ground ginger or you can get the fresh ginger and it's really easy to peel using a spoon. Then you can add some other vegetables. This in particular calls for cauliflower, but if you don't like it, that's okay. You can leave that out. Or you can get a blend of vegetables to add in, in addition to the cauliflower or instead of the cauliflower. Also calls for peas, which can be uh, fresh, frozen, or canned and some onion, which can be fresh onion or the frozen chopped onions, and some curry powder. Garlic, again from whichever form of garlic you have, the fresh garlic might taste the best, although that minced canned garlic isn't too bad. And then you put it all together in a pot, warm it up, and you can spoon that mix over the rice or mix it in with the rice. You can even do that in your rice cooker ahead of time. If you figure out the timing right, you can put everything together and enjoy. As we mentioned, this lesson is about stress. Stress is a normal part of life. We all experience stress. Stress interacts with our emotions. In particular, stress accentuates anxiety and worry and fear and depression and sadness and even that sense of despair. And sometimes stress makes us react in anger or rage. Stress comes in both an acute and a chronic form. There's an acute stress reaction, that fight or flight response we get when we're scared or alerted or something happens that catches us off guard. When that happens, we get this surge of adrenaline that makes us hyper alert. Our heart rate goes up, our blood pressure goes up. There's a shift of blood flow to the muscles so that we're ready to, to fight or run. There's a healthy response to this. The stress response 
initially that happens, a stress reaction, is physiologic and something that's out of our control. However, we can modify how we respond to this by thinking and understanding. If somebody just almost sideswiped you and you realize that that stress response is just because of that, you understand that and you can calm yourself down and let that stress pass. You can also use that mindfulness without judgment where you think about a situation and you realize, well, that's I'm just responding to this situation. I don't have to be angry. I don't have to be sad or worried. You can also recognize what's causing it and being aware that that, ha that should have no lasting effect on you. And you can deliberately control how you respond. If you give it a couple of minutes, you don't have to fight. You don't have to run. You can learn how to control and that helps promote a balance to your life so you're not constantly responding in extremes to the stress that's around you. However, you need to be cautious because we can overburden our body and exceed reserves. We need to watch that carefully where sometimes the things that cause us stress outbalance our reserves and it's like a boat that's sinking. You feel like there's no way forward, that you're just overburdened by the things that are weighing upon you. There are some things that you can do that might be contributing to that stress that you can alter. For example, are you consuming too much caffeine? That will give you that sense of anxiety and worriedness and sometimes appending impending doom? Are you addicted to caffeine or tobacco or alcohol? Are those things contributing to your stress? And of course these unhealthy foods that we've been talking about and if you're new to this and haven't seen our, our first sessions on healthy food I would encourage you to, to go back and, and watch the videos on fiber and blue zones and get an understanding of what we're talking about there. Lack of sleep which will be our next session that we'll be talking about together. So you can find that on our website as well. Overcommitment. Are you just doing too much? And are you stuck in these unhealthy thought patterns where you're down on yourself or you constantly are worried that something bad is going to happen? And are you making poor choices that contribute to your stress? There are other causes of unbalanced stress that may be beyond our control, such as some health problems or pain, uh, a condition called hyperthyroidism, which can make you anxious. And then there's anxiety and depression that might just be there that we can't control with any external factors. And there's also sometimes some social or interpersonal conflicts that are outside of our control. Well, this unbalanced stress actually accounts for 70% of our visits to the primary care providers. So it's a significant thing. The effects of stress can be seen on our body, such as headaches and muscle tension or pain, chest pain, fatigue, change in your sex drive, upset stomach, sleep disorders. It also affects our mood. We can become more anxious or restless or lack motivation or focus. We can feel overwhelmed or irritable or angry or sad or depressed. It also affects our behavior. When you're stressed, you tend to overeat or maybe undereat or eat the wrong foods. You may be prone to angry outbursts or drug or alcohol or tobacco abuse, social withdrawal and avoidance of physical activity and exercise. Well, there's some things I want to talk about and introduce you to that will help you with your stress management. Things like breathing, just taking these long, slow, deep breaths, mindfulness, being aware of what's causing your feelings of stress without judging, meditation, which is redirecting your thoughts, and relaxation, which also can, can interrupt or redirect your thoughts and things that tie in with relaxation can be activities like Tai Chi or yoga, Pilates or a nice massage and then physical activity and exercise. And then we're going to talk about how to re-engineer your life 
some ideas that might help you with managing your stress. But first we want to talk about deep breathing. If you take a deep breath in and hold it, it automatically slows down your heart rate, decreases your blood pressure, and counteracts that adrenaline surge. Adrenaline doesn't stay in your system very long. And if you can just give it some time after that fright response, it'll settle down. So if you can take even two or three minutes and take some deep breaths, hold them in, and then slowly let them out. Uh, be aware of your body as it's breathing. You will, you would feel that calming effect that takes place. Down below this, if you scroll down, you'll find a breathing exercise that you can do to help learn how to better better do this. Another form of controlling stress is mindful, being mindful of the present. Now, so many of us, while we are in the present, are busy worrying about the past or worrying about the future and therefore missing out entirely on the present, what's there right in front of us. Think about this gal, for example. She's not worried about what happened yesterday. She's not worried about her next dirty diaper or where the next food's coming from, but she's totally engaged in this watermelon. She's feeling the smoothness of it, the wetness of it. She's going to put her finger into it and feel it give, and she's most likely going to put that finger into her mouth and enjoy the sweetness of it. How often do we miss out on those present experiences because we're too busy thinking about something else? So we need, need to learn how to clear our minds and be more in the present as this little girl is. There's also this mindfulness of that stress response. When you feel that stress, you can recognize it and say, my heart is racing, my fist and jaws are clenched. It's because... That guy nearly sideswiped me. That's normal. You can be aware of what's causing it. And then you can relax and say, I don't need to do anything because it's over. It's gone. What I do need to do is refocus on the things that I can make a difference on. Not worry about those things that caused me stress yesterday or that potentially could cause me stress tomorrow. Be aware of what's happening. Focus on what you can make a difference on. I want to point out the power of memory. For example, think about a lemon. Think about holding it in your hand, smelling it, squeezing it, and then just think about what it would be like to put that lemon in your mouth and suck on it. Do you feel it? You feel that tightening up of your salivary glands, anticipating that? Yet there's no lemon in your hand. It's just what you're thinking about, your memory. So those memories are very powerful. You need to learn to let go of those memories that are counterproductive, that make you relive your stress response. You know, PTSD is an extreme example of this, where something triggers that feeling or that memory and you relive the experience. We all do that to some degree. We need to learn how to control that and let it go. One of the things you can do is have helpful thoughts instead. Think about the things that have been beneficial to you, things you're grateful for, things you're thankful for, people you're thankful for. Be forgiving. Try to understand if somebody did something harmful to you rather than living in that anger against them which is hurting you say well it's over with it's done with you know they probably didn't intend it negatively for me give them the benefit of the doubt and let them move on let you yourself move on letting that anger behind just as remembering a negative past experience causes you to re-experience some of the negative response physiologically, a past positive experience brought back to mind and remembered 
can help you re-experience the positive emotions. You get a, an endorphin release that makes you feel good and helps move away from that stress. So think about those positive experiences, your first date with your spouse, a time on the beach that you enjoyed, or some special food, things like that that you can think back of that remind you of pleasurable experiences. Then you want to introduce relaxation into your life. You want to plan for it. There's a relaxation response technique that you can find down below in one of the videos and practice that. It's very effective. There's several variations of it as you scroll further down. There's also meditation that you can learn to do that redirects your thoughts. And as I mentioned, things like Tai Chi and yoga and Pilates and massage all help you relax by redirecting your thinking, as does physical activity and exercise. Finally, we want to talk about how to re-engineer your life. There are some things that you can do to manage your lifestyle, to make healthier choices part of your routine to help alleviate or minimize the stress. A healthy diet, for example, that we've talked about. You can go back and look at those first three sessions on our website. Physical activity, you can look at that session as well. Rest, sleep, there's another session on sleep that will help you practice healthy sleep. And then you want to avoid those unhealthy things like excess caffeine and alcohol and tobacco and uh, other substances and drugs. So here's some ideas for reducing stress. You can find these for download in a handout on the left sidebar. But what we want to do is help you to create structure in your life that minimizes stress. One of the things you can do foundationally is to understand what is important to you. Ask, how does this contribute to what I want to do in life. How does this add meaning to my life? You want to be consistent. It's inconsistency that oftentimes causes stress. You want to be true to yourself. Know what you want to accomplish in your life, what your purpose is. And that may be focused around your faith and your family. You want to plan and have a routine. Lack of routine leaves us wide open for things that will disrupt our lives and lead us into high levels of stress. Now, on the contrary, sometimes a rigid routine that allows no flexibility can also cause stress whenever something disrupts that. So there's a happy balance, but routines generally are pretty helpful in that we can predict and maintain a healthier lifestyle if we have a routine. We only have a certain amount of time and energy, so you want to control that the best you can to focus it on the things that are important to you. So one thing that is helpful for a lot of people is in the evening to create your to-do list for the next day, or maybe you do that first thing in the morning to help you get uh, avoid getting sidetracked and at the end of the day feeling stressed out because you didn't do the things that were most important for you. And then generally you try to stick to that with the idea that there's certain times that you need to be flexible. In the evening you can set up for the next day, lay out your food, uh, get your breakfast ready, know what you're pack or what you're taking for lunch. You can get that packed ahead of time, ready to go, lay out the clothes that you want to wear so you don't have to spend a lot of time in the morning thinking about it. And then have that regular bedtime. A regular bedtime is very important to our normal physiology. And again, I would encourage you to watch the session on stress or on sleep. Be careful with that alcohol and the caffeine. And include breaks in your day. Plan that walk after lunch. Plan that few minutes of deep breathing or relaxation. You want to plan to break that stressful routine. And you can do this in your schedule uh, by planning other enjoyable activities like reading, 
games and hobbies, a walk or exercise, or even a short nap. You want to interrupt that stress cycle, again, with things like meditation and prayer, yoga, pilates, tai chi, massage, uh, enjoyment of nature, or a Sabbath, a regular scheduled day once a week where you take a break from your activities of your work schedule and set it aside to make it special for relaxation, recreation, restoration. Guard your time. Protect uninterrupted, dedicated time so that you can get things done that need to be done. And you might avoid or turn off your devices or make sure you don't go to the internet or check your email, turn those notifications off, don't listen to the news. You just leave all those things alone while you focus on a task before you. Block out your calendar for this so you don't inadvertently give that time away to somebody else in a schedule. Learn to say no to those things that don't really further your purpose or are not meaningful to you. Choose thoughtfully and carefully the things that will help you live your life to your fullest with the least amount of stress. Think about your past day. You can do this in the evening or it could be first thing in the morning depending on how you are wired. But you want to reflect on the things that you did, especially those accomplishments and Celebrate those. Be thankful for those. What are you grateful for? Think about the positives, not the negatives. Preempt conflict in your life. We have enough conflict anyway that we certainly don't need to contribute to that. One of the things that's sometimes hard to do, but we all know it's best, is to be honest because lies catch up with us. So if you don't tell the truth, it's going to come back and bite you. Just be honest to start with and preempt that conflict and that stressful situation. Accept responsibility right up front. If you've made a mistake, if you've done something wrong, it will decrease the stress over the long haul. And avoid unnecessary confrontation. Obviously, there are times we have to, to confront somebody about something. But we oftentimes jump into the fray, send an email or a text or respond to a blog in anger or uh, with sudden burst of emotion and we wish we hadn't and then we get a response that comes back and the cycle goes on. Let others have their opinions. That's okay. You don't have to change the mind of everybody in the world. Let it go. Enjoy your own situation, your own circumstances, your own life. Let them have theirs. And then manage stress with social interaction. Spiritual activities are very helpful. People who attend church or worship on a regular basis are healthier on many levels than those who do not. Social clubs, activities, dancing. Reach out to your family and friends. Call, call them, text them, email them, whatever it is. Get in touch with people. Laugh. Do something enjoyable. See a movie that helps you laugh or get together with friends and enjoy the time, and then volunteer. Get your mind off yourself and focus on other people. So now it's time to set some goals. As you think through them, download the goal sheet from the left sidebar and look them over and choose some things, maybe such as I will consume only one caffeinated beverage a day and five days a week. I'll exercise for 10 minutes after my evening meal. I will review the tips for stress reduction, uh, which you can download on the left sidebar and see which ones work for you. Are you ready for health? I hope so. Good luck in applying some of the stress reduction techniques. Be sure to review the website for some helpful videos and other resources.